So today, October 29th is celebrated as World Psoriasis Day and uh, we have with us Dr. Shraddha who is going to be uh, sharing a lot of insightful inputs on psoriasis. So let's welcome Dr. Shraddha. How are you doctor? I'm good. So today is World Psoriasis Day, something that uh, you know has been a lot spoken about although it is a very recent disease that's been added to the the enormous list of diseases that are being um, uh, I wouldn't say discovered, invented, I don't know what the word is but We yes, know more added. about the pathogenesis now, there's yeah. a lot of uh, insights into the how the disease happens and what happens in the disease. Sure, so what is psoriasis doctor? So psoriasis is actually an immune mediated disease uh, which clinically you see as uh, scaly red patches anywhere in the body but predominantly over the joints. So. Um, does somebody who has uh, psoriasis, you know, um, do they have to fear that it is, you know, infectious or contagious? No, it is definitely not infectious and not contagious at all. So, Doctor, what causes psoriasis? So, psoriasis has a genetic predisposition. You have to have the genetic predisposition for it, and the environmental triggers like uh, weight gain or change in temperatures, extreme temperatures or stress or any uh, trauma or infections, anything can be a trigger, even smoking. Um, so when that, once that trigger happens and they have a genetic predisposition, the immune cells start reacting in a different way. So that uh, different reaction produces these patches on the skin and in some people they can also have the joints affected. So who or what kind of people are prone to this, uh, to psoriasis? So, mostly if you have a family member having psoriasis, then chances are there. As, as I said, there is a genetic predisposition. Those who have an unhealthy lifestyle, that is those who are obese or uh, low physical activity, unhealthy food habits, excessive smoking, excessive alcohol, these people are prone to get uh, are more likely to get psoriasis and especially if they have a genetic predisposition and they have more fat because fat itself is capable of releasing inflammatory mediators so that can uh, they, are mo they have more chances of getting psoriasis or having a more severe disease also. So um, is psoriasis symptomatic doctor does, does somebody you know have to look out for uh, symptoms to know that they have uh, contracted this or how does it uh, so how know, does one identify it? yeah so you know contract the disease basically they develop, they develop the it. disease so once they develop it they will see some patches mostly it's reddish uh, scaly and it's thick it protrudes from the skin and uh, mostly it's seen on the joints uh, either hands elbows knees ankles Sometimes some people get it only on the scalp, sometimes it's uh, uh, only in the folds, that is uh, underarms and the chest folds or thigh folds. So, and sometimes it's only on the palms and soles. So, we have different types of psoriasis based on the location. Sometimes it can be anywhere, it's, it can occur even from head to toe. So, this is what they will see this as patches. Some of them can also have joint pains, hmm? uh, swollen, inflamed joints, especially the small joints. And itching is usually not there, but around 20 to 30 percent of patients with psoriasis can have severe itching, and that can disturb their quality of life. So you were mentioning psoriasis and the joints. Is that what they call arthritis? Psoriasis. So arthritis. psoriatic arthritis is when they also have joint pain, joint involvement. Not just on not the just skin is is not enough to say arthritis. When they have uh, tenderness, swelling of the joints then we say psoriatic arthritis. So, um, is this treatable? I know it's not curable. So, yeah, so any chronic disease, it's definitely controllable, it's definitely treatable. Like diabetes, like hypertension, like hypothyroid, any chronic disease, we are treating it and it's well under control. This is one such disease which is very much treatable, very much under control. But the only thing is people get, since it is the skin, they want their inpatient to, they uh, tend to go for treatments which promise cure, like say Siddha or uh, you know native treatments or anything. Uh, so they say they use the word cure over there, mm -hmm. cure your psoriasis. So they 
they tend to believe that and go towards that treatment and they come back to us with complications. So that is one thing that people should avoid. Um, so doctor, since you mentioned, uh, so there are people who, you know, there are a lot of, uh, again, you know, social media has been promoting a lot of products and uh, some of them self-medicate. So how, uh, I know it is not recommended, but what would you say for people like that? Definitely don't self-medicate because the uh, one is there are different kinds of treatments. We have creams and we have tablets and uh, uh, we have uh, phototherapy, we have injections and so especially with tablets and medications they do have side effects. So when we give them we know how to monitor, we know how to what to look for and it's under supervision that they have to take their medications. I have seen patients self-medicating with tablets because they're all right, then they don't bother coming back and they keep taking it. It can be very dangerous to do that. Also, some of them do this, no doctor. May probably, if I have suffered from it and you know something is working yes. for me, I can yes. tell you, you know what, yes. this is done, so here's my prescription. <laughs> Definitely, I have seen tablets like methotrexate being passed on like this and I've had a patient who's taken it for more than six months how did you take it? Because a friend recommended. I mean, it takes some courage to do that and I would definitely advise against that. Yeah. It's always best to consult the Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Doctor, does somebody who, I mean, uh, has psoriasis, you know, how much of a quality life can they lead? Yes. So, most of the times it does affect their quality of life. So, if you actually look at uh, earlier uh, treatment standards when we started patients on oral tablets or injections we would look at something called as the PASI scope that is the amount of area involved and then take that into consideration for starting treatment but now we also have to take the DLQI that is Dermatology Life Quality Index so when you look at the patient may have only one patch which is on the scalp or on the hand but that can cause him more disturbances than the actual disease per se, you know, how there could be somebody uh, in the with the media or anything like that, which can be very disturbing. So when we take into consideration the DLQI, then we choose our treatment as well, and uh, it can be emotionally very disturbing for patients. So, uh, so we do definitely consider that when we choose our treatment. So how how do how are they supposed to deal with this, uh, doctor? And how so early can they? come for a treatment? So as early as possible. So the earlier we treat, there is recent data showing that the earlier we treat, the better the results and the, uh, the long lasting the remissions are. So uh, they must come to us as early as possible. They can opt for good treatments even if they have only one patch. So now they say that starting them with biologics earlier on in the disease course is more beneficial than waiting for them to have a severe disease and then starting them on treatment. So, and it really improves their quality of life, it improves their confidence. We've had patients who had for like 10 years, 11 years, very depressed and now leading normal lives. So it's more than getting the disease under control, you know, having them, having, you know, when a patient can tell you, Doc, I, I'm wearing half sleeves now, you know, I can wear half sleeves, I don't have to wear full sleeves all the time, it really makes a huge difference. So doctor, you, you had mentioned about obesity a little earlier saying that it is related to psoriasis. So would a, a you know, proper diet or you know, taking supplements or a nutritive, a nutritive pattern of eating help with psoriasis? Yes, definitely it does help and uh, there is some data that we have to say that Mediterranean diet uh, helps psoriasis. So, uh, uh, high content of green leafy vegetables and uh, fish oils so and uh, also low calorie diet huh, is seen and off going off processed food and sugars which is inflammatory mm -hmm. so all this uh, is shown to help uh, in psoriasis. Thank you very much doctor for all those uh, uh, information that you have shared especially uh, today being the world psoriasis day I'm sure uh, all those of you who are listening uh, Please follow these uh, inputs that Dr. Shada has shared with us and for the others who are fortunate enough to not have those disease, please do not uh, hurt those who are going through this. Please stand by them, help them and if you can identify uh, symptoms, please reach them to an expert as early as possible.
Thank you very much once again for joining us. We will be back with more videos. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Doctor.